Okay, back at it again. Right, so we've just claimed this copper ore here. And yeah, I think I need to keep expanding this border this way just to get a bit of extra space there. And uh, probably straighten out this way too so that my territory becomes more convex. So my robots don't end up flying out across the Bider territory all the time. So yeah, I guess that's probably going to be the next step. Maybe send a few robots up here first to make sure that I have coverage of all that. Uh, I have 12 of them, so I definitely can do that. I also would like to cover those robots with defenses in that case, so... Yeah, I guess I just need to build this whole thing. Another alternative is to just tap this oil instead. And just stop caring about this one for now. I could do that. Yeah, I think I'll start with expanding this further forward in this way. Just to finish this up here. So, first of all, I need another couple of layers here. Oops. And it's not the right one. Oh yeah, that, that doesn't work in that orientation, okay. So let's just take this, like that. And here I can use this one. Let's not fall off the cliffs, unless we have to. I imagine that worm's going to be grumpy. Okay, let's put in some filling here. Time to move these forward again. Yeah, we can do that right now, even. Move them up like here. to these maybe? Yeah, there we go. Toast. Let's see what's going on up here. I guess we can just... Yeah, we can just burn these from inside, it seems. I had another idea here actually, which is to use landmines because I have those now. So, what I could do, try to do, is let's get landmines here. What if I just drop some landmines on top of them? So these do 250 explosion damage. These don't really have that. So two mines so it should kill one of those, I think. Mm -hmm. 
things have 200 health. And no resistances. Let's see what happens. I guess maybe these turrets are just, yeah, the turrets are good. just gonna deal with it. Okay, so not those, I suppose. And if we can do it up here. Let's just see what happens. Maybe not quite that many, but like... Let's see what happens. So here they are. Keep an eye on those in the map view. Yeah, I think we can already move this forward. Like that. Yeah, these were the mines. So let's see what happens with these. Probably the worms will just snipe the robots, I think. Yeah, that seems like the most likely outcome here. But it could work. I mean, they're occupied with these robots right now, so... Let's see. There they come, and they're getting sniped. Let's go out there. That's one down. <laughs> yeah, so if I do this with some more mines, this definitely will work. He's gonna die, yeah. Boom. <laughs> okay. It's a successful proof of concept, I guess. Yeah, let's get rid of these worms here. So let's get another chest down here for mines. And move a few of these down. Three hundred should be enough.
So these have yeah, 750 and they take like 100 and 160 something damage. So I'm gonna need quite a few mines to kill one of these. How's the landmine move going? Is these? Or are they here already? No? So where are all those robots? Do they cancel? Can you put it somewhere else? Oh yeah, they put it here for some reason. Okay, now they go the right direction. over here as well so that they're easier to work with yeah that yep now all the robots are busy This up here and this. And then I'll wait for a bit uh, before I move. Uh, before I move the line forward, uh, just wait for a few more robots to get uh, ready. <laughs> yeah, the peaks are quite significant now. Wait, is... Oh, wow. Yeah, I should probably... Take a few radars down. I don't need that many of them. Okay, so... Uh, radars... Take some of those down. Like... All of these, at least. Most of these, most of these. You don't need all of these. Those two can stay, I think. And where else? These two can go. Any more? Yeah, I can take a few of these down too. 
Maybe leave this one in the middle. Can take these two out, and this one as well. Probably don't need both of those. Okay, that should save a bit of power. <laughs> yep, halving the amount of radars. At least. Yeah, even a few more to go. Huh. So how are these doing now? We're getting there. Okay, maybe I do need a radar in here. Right there. Wait. Shouldn't there be one there? I think that should have placed one at least. Yeah, there we go. Patch the holes. Okay, now I think we're ready to move forward again. I guess these are out of radar or robot coverage now. Hello, I bet the crazy. Welcome back. starting to look pretty good. I can now very easily expand my borders whenever I need to, just by doing this kind of blame turret creeping. So the goal right now is to expand all the way out here and uh, yeah, probably close off something like that or something and then up this way as well to straighten out these edges and then start mining this. Maybe I should actually do that now, even, to get started on that. Although I do need something to use it for, I suppose. 
Yeah, I can at least get this back up and running. Uh, but yeah. And I've also been experimenting with a new combat tactic here, which is to just order the robots to fly in and place mines inside the nests. Which kind of works. You need uh, enough robots at the same time to just overwhelm the worms so they don't just keep sniping the robots. But if you can do that, then it works kind of okay. So let's see here. Yeah, those should be covered. And down here, I need... Like that. And that should cover all of them. For deconstruction there. Because I noticed I have... I have been spending... This much energy on radars. Which is not quite what I need. To be fair, turret creeping is way easier than doing what I had to do to get here. Yep. And that is why I do it. And it's also much, much safer. I mean, the front is here, and I am here. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot safer. I have also been thinking maybe I should just build some kind of fort, like 20 by 20 walls in every direction and just put myself in there. Just like build a castle for myself and put myself in to keep myself safe. And now we're out of roboports actually. So let's see here. Don't think I really need this one. can get away with every other one of these. Same there. And yeah, I should probably make this both roboports and radars, because that's kind of how I'm using these at this point. So, get those, those. And then deconstruct some turrets. Actually the walls too. Like that. So by the way, how far away from rocket do I, do I expect I am? Um, you mean in hours? I'm not sure. It's um let's see. It's a few more technologies to get there. Uh, many of which require these new science packs, so yeah. A while, but yeah, I'm thinking I might be like halfway there and halfway or less even maybe. So the first time I played Marathon Death World, it took me about, yeah, ni 99 and a half hours to make my first blue circuit. And uh, let's see, this game is now 31 hours. And I don't think it'll be really all that long before I get to blue circuits. Um, that time I was also doing rail world settings. So, like, Marathon Death World, but with Rail World settings also. Um, so I needed to spend a lot of time just driving around in my tank to clear territory and stuff like that, and setting up train networks. And I don't think I will really will be using that much terrains here. Because these I can just fairly easily just belt around. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure if these are going to be enough to get to the robot to to the rocket, but they just might be. Uh, especially if I get some uh, uh, some mining productivity research done here, that could be a thing. See, I don't think I'm all that far away from the rocket. 
clean up some of these walls. And is that it? Oh, that's a rock, okay. I thought it was a building ghost. Uh, yeah, so continue this expansion here. Place this in right away, probably. It's probably fine. And the edge piece, corner piece rather. Maybe I should take some of these trees down. To prevent some forest fires. I guess we can try the mine strategy here. Okay, those are outside. We can do something like this. Yeah, another thing I can do is just do this. Uh, Let's take a wall segment, let's place it like that, and we we'll place a mine somewhere. Actually, I'm gonna try to get it somewhat in line there. And like this, I can get a grid of lights. Oops. Can I even make that like this? With one height one. Yeah. Now they align nicely. <laughs> See what happens with that. Okay, that's all outside of range. Okay, so never mind. Okay, what here is it within range? I don't know if that's gonna reach the worm. Let's just do this. And then we can properly bomb these. There. Thing here, maybe need a bit more. Uh, need to get a bit closer there. Should have mines down here now. Yes, okay. Oh, but I don't have any robot parts, okay. So I need to recycle some. Maybe I should just move these out. And recycle these instead. Just to stay connected there. What 
are these doing now? Oh, okay, they're <laughs> leaving wood. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, did I strand those there? Looks like I did. Or this? No, this is not. Oh, it is disconnected. Well, I guess this is not there. Well, that should be incoming. Yeah, it looks like that one has materials. So yeah, that's going to be placed eventually, and these will get back in order. Okay, now let's see if these are going to work. I think I'm going to have to cancel and redo those, so that I can get them all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Let's replace those again. a bunch of mines. When you don't have artillery, you can always use robots to deliver your explosives instead. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. And sniped. Oh, so close. need... oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. Sure. Yeah, I think I like the flame torch better. What does this feel like World War II or something with, with flak versus bombers? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of similar. Anti-air turrets here. And my bomber robots coming in. So yeah. There is definitely some similarity. Let's do that. So let's actually get started on this mine here. That'll help get Roboport production back up. Or just up, I guess, because it's never really been all that high. Okay, so... Let's see if I can find a good unit in here. Let's just place them down like this. Now I think it's probably time to go up to medium poles. And let's see here. There, there, there.
no? No frames? There is flames. Okay. Now I need to pick this up. Out of it. So let's clean up some more of these. Let's also get rid of some of the radars here. Okay, and go back to here. So it looks like I actually. Oh, wait, I don't have coverage here. Oops. Yep, we'll need to figure that out. Um, let's see, um, so we need power poles, yeah, so like this one, it is seven. Again, those need to be moduled. There. It's quite hard to see here, but there we are. And then this side. Should cover the entire patch. Some belts. Oops. That's going to be six full belts of copper ore. So let's just get all of these up this way.
So these are how many? Looks like at about eight. That's eight, okay. So that should be quite easy to balance even. So I can do like this. Let's do some standard four by four first. Balancer, and then I just need to balance each of those with each other. Uh, so that's, that's one done. job of balancing this, I think. This doesn't really need to be all that exact. Just to keep the patch from draining unevenly, or too unevenly. It's probably not the best, yeah, it's definitely not the best 8 to 8 balance you can find, and it probably doesn't even balance everything completely. But I think it's gonna be fine. So, then I can just. Uh, let's see, I need to pull this way. Uh, so, pull everything down, or up rather. Right, I only need like this, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I really only need to pull down twice, actually. Out goes right. Should be an okay balancer. So now I need some more robot coverage here. Let's go like that, covers all of it. And then the rest is already covered. Cool. So maybe now it's time to tear this wall down. Or do I keep it? I don't think I need to keep it.
I do need to keep some of these pipes though. Like those. Oh, but I also need those, okay. So I need all those pipes to stay. Okay, now let's just pull this whole thing. Six, yeah. Oh, wow, did that not connect everything? Guess I'll grab a wider one. Stone and yeah, really for now I only really need one of these belts, or yeah, just one. So actually, let's just drop all of them except one. Let's run this all the way up here. For now, I think it's just fine to merge into this one, because I don't have as any other consumers yet, anyway. So I can just do yeah, something like that. Let's do it all the way down here. Uh, like that. See so there there are not enough modules. That's okay. This copper will help restart module production <coughs> production here. Do I have any in my inventory? Oh just those. Okay. Uh, did I Disable this? No. Okay, blue science is still running in theory. Yeah, there are a few packs there. Okay. And the swarm of robots. way down. <laughs> That's good. These are no longer needed. It's no longer needed. Ghost remain here. 
That's one. Number two on that. There. Okay. That's the mine completely built. So I just need this belt to finish. Okay, looks like these are all the belts that are missing. Just one more, and that one's there. Ah. Okay. Copper input is back up. So one next big thing would be to upgrade these furnaces so I can pull double the input through them. But yeah, I think I have, in order to just... I'm gonna need lots and lots more red circuits and I'm probably just gonna need to build a bigger factory for those. Like several copies of this thing here. Okay, now I can get back to expanding the borders here. So let's do that. Corner piece and this one and that one. wave of robots. The wave front there. Looks quite cool. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there are a lot of things in Factorio that are just kind of pleasant to look at. Like huge swarms of robots just building huge factories in one go. And also I find that uranium processing facilities are often very pleasing to look at as well. With the green glow and everything. And also just knowing that this whole thing is a thing that you built. And granted this is not a big base, but still, no. It's nice to look at. Uh, okay, so down here the wall is up, so we can put in some filling. <laughs> I 
Yeah, this copper hasn't made it all the way up to the base yet. There it is. I'm getting there. They've done a great job, and even more impressive is how well coded it is. I think it's crashed a handful of times to max over all these dev years. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had the game crash on me. Not counting when I was developing a mod and constantly made it crash because I had bad code in my mod, but... I mean, just crashing from bugs or anything. I don't have, think I've ever experienced something like that in this game. And that is over close to f a thousand, uh, <coughs> one and a half thousand hours. So yeah, it definitely is a very robustly programmed game. It occurred to me like a couple of weeks ago that it's quite remarkable that Factorio speedruns don't have a glitchless category. That is quite rare, and it probably means there just aren't any exploitable glitches. Which is pretty cool. It's not often, it's not many games that can have that kind of prestige. Sorry, medium spitters, you're gonna die. <laughs> and yeah, now this forest is gonna burn as well. Uh, let's take some of it down. Fire is too fast. Even cooler for me is that they're down on like one hour thirty or whatever, and I still haven't gonna close the eight hours of achievement yet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really tried getting the eight hours achievement yet. But I've been thinking maybe after this after I finish this challenge I should probably wanna get in some get into some speedrunning. So I've wanted to do that for a long time, I just have never gotten around to it. I've started on a uh, on a speedrun-ish attempt once, but then I you just didn't finish it for no particular reason. Um, okay, so let's get working on this one. Yeah, friend, we're able to do it within 15 hours, huh? Cool. That's well done. It's much faster than I've ever done it, I think. I think my first playthrough was like 70 hours or something like that to launch the first rocket. The very first time I played the game. And then after that I've always done some kind of challenge like this, either no walking or marathon death roll or yeah, something. 
something of that kind of nature. Being two people here did help a lot, yeah, I can imagine. Let's do the mind trick here. Actually, I guess it's more rather the worm that needs a lot of mines. Hehe. <laughs> Come on, robots. <laughs> okay, we didn't get the worm. Uh, two meters away from the worm, they think, yeah, now it's probably a good time to go back and recharge. Yeah, sure. Also, I do love the direction they took with the achievements as a way of giving players alternative ways to play. Yeah, that too. I think especially the Lazy Bastard achievement really does add a lot to the game. I mean, playing in that kind of <coughs> in that kind of way. But yeah, also the uh, like no solar power and these kind of things. It's yeah, it's a way to nudge yourself into a challenge. And find new, <coughs> find new ways to play, like this flame turret creep thing. Okay. So I'll do like one more layer here, and then just close it off. No lasers, no solar, no drones. Definitely more achievements than maybe appreciate stuff that you kind of took for granted. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, also, I've never really been using the advanced robot logistics because, so in my very first base, uh, I of course first off I made this huge spaghetti mess, and uh, yeah, it got me into the first couple of sciences, but yeah, it wasn't very efficient and difficult to expand and all that. So then, once I got to advanced logistics, and this was back in like 0 0.16 or something, I think. Uh, so then I basically replaced everything with just bot-fed uh, things. Just like assembler, input, output, and just uh, provider and requester like that. Just did this for everything. And it ended up being quite boring, I think. Like, there's not really, not really a challenge in doing any of this. Like, the only challenge is, like, finding the ratios. And I guess if you, if you want to do that uh, yeah, at a full scale, you would have to worry about bot throughput and all that, but in that kind of build, it's mm, really just mostly taking away most of the enjoyment, I think. So ever since then, I have been just preferring belts over robots for pretty much everything. I've even gone so far as to build my own 
belt-based logistic bot-free logistic system <laughs> with like programmable power or train stations and stuff like that um, which is also kind of fun to do The survive a hit of 500, yeah. <laughs> That's a fun achievement. I think I got that one by accident. But as I expect most players pro probably did. In my case, by getting hit by a train. <laughs> but surviving. So let's do one more layer here. I do like having mall stuff in a passive and like something moving some weird stuff to a single point like gates near the walls. We usually make the walls near the military signs. Okay. Not sure what you mean by that, but okay. Yeah, this time I've also ended up do making the walls in the military science build. <laughs> I guess these have never been working. It also looks like they never have had in anything to do, so it's it's fine. It's still kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, usually I do a bit more separated things like here I, like I have inserted some belts over here and then another one in there but for this I went with just doing everything in here just so I have everything in one place it's a bit easier to set up and basically like everything from the smelters to this and these two were kind of planned out in advance and the rest has more like grown organically around it. So let's continue on here. Yeah, we can take this wall down. I still want these roboports for a bit of connection there, but I can get rid of this one. And this one is also not needed. I guess I can also zigzag these.
Yeah, the satellite having a separate production of solar panels, accumulators, and radars just for it seems wasteful. Uh, I'm not sure I agree about that. You don't really need that many assemblers to make it work, so I usually just throw a few of those down right next to the silo. Keep it easy. But okay, now we have full throughput of copper again. Which also means we have some more blue science. So yeah, it's probably time to get to uh, to continue science again now. And uh, yeah, I guess if we want to go for the silo, we're going to need all the things eventually. Especially productivity modules are going to be useful here, so I think I'm going to go for those first. This also unlocks the blue circuits. <laughs> yeah, these are all reports could be made a lot more efficient. I don't think I really need to bother that. Yeah, I don't need to worry that all as much yet. I have a pretty good inflow of red circuits now. So... I guess I should also straighten this out. Love setting up chests with green and red wire so I don't need to close them off, but still limiting the size. Yeah, I like that too. More often with the uh, uh, these kind of things, I, I usually connect them to the logistic network instead. Um, but without a limit on the chest itself, but rather like this will keep working as long as there's less than, I think in this case, a thousand pipes in the logistic network. So even if the, even if the pipes are stored somewhere else, it'll still limit this chest here. So, what's power looking? Probably gonna need more power now, actually. Roboports are consuming most of the power. Yeah, and this is producing way more stuff than it can, or it's making more solid fuel than it needs to. So, actually. Let's see, maybe I should limit this. Yeah, I can easily do that. So I can do this. And then put a pump here. get some more space for this. Same as this one. Let's see. Yeah, that's going to be if we have less than some amount of solid fuel. Like 1000. And then yellow into 
Oh wait. Uh, yes. Yellow into some of you will be one. And wire that up to the same pole. And then this pump will only work if solid fuel no. logistic connection, okay. There, okay. If uh, yellow into fuel equals one, or greater than zero even. And then... this whole thing up thank you robots uh, so that's the first thing to do there to connect this over all the way up there. Yeah. I guess I could do it the other way around too. Can move this one down here instead. blueprints you made. It's totally useless but quite fun to have as a drone how we're sent for storage here to find stuff in. Let's see. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, this looks pretty cool. So maybe I'll try bring that up on the screen. Just so people can see. See here. No, yep, so this is now disabled, which means we're making making a solid fuel out of the least efficient possible recipe, which is exactly what I want because I have too much solid fuel. So that's great. Do I need more of those camp plants maybe? Probably do. I mean, 
don't do anything on same really fast, it's a bliss, yeah. <laughs> you can just go in there and drag your cursor over all the boxes. I suppose. Yeah, well, output is full, so more of these camp plants is not really going to do anything anyway. I just need to consume more solid fuel, really. I guess I should start converting some of it into rocket fuel eventually. I would like to unsquiggle these, but I can't really do it without disabling them. I guess I can do them it one at a time, like this. And then the other neighbors will keep them covered during the change. You can just empty it in a purple chest and get anything you actually want back in an instant as long as there are bots there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool too. Oh, there's fish. That's by accident, basically. <laughs> I guess we can launch those on the rocket. Eventually. Um, so, right now I need more red circuits. That's the big thing here. So for that I need more furnaces. And I probably can... yeah, I probably can just upgrade this a bit. So, let's do some red belts. At long last. actually just belts in general. So I'm probably gonna go with the my usual layout for this. It's a layout I like quite a lot. Let's get some more space here. This is a design I basically stole from Catherine of Sky once upon a time. I never actually imported a blueprint, but I just copied it from off the screen. And I, yeah, I kind of like it. So it's going to be like this. the green chests though? In my mind they're really more useless. They would. So one thing that would be very useful for is this kind of thing I'm doing here. If I had a buffer chest of like hmm, 20 pipes, 5 flamethrowers and like 20 walls or something in each of these cells then it would be really easy to just move forward and, uh, and then the logistics bots will continue carrying stuff forward um, along with it, so I don't have to do this kind of manual thing with copying these boxes and then manually deconstructing those to move the contents and that kind of thing. So that's a kind of thing, for example, that buffer chests would be quite useful for. And then also for, well, actually I think mostly for that, that kind of thing, like you, you want to keep a few things close by for for example, if you, one of the things I sometimes do is I make a, a blueprint with uh, just maximally spaced roboports, like that, something, whatever, and then just tile the entire world with that. And uh, yeah, the, the farther you tile away from the base, the, the longer it takes for the bots to get there. Um, so if you have some buffer chests in the, in the grid with the components you need to expand, then that makes things a whole lot snappier. 
Um, okay, let's get back to this. I'm gonna have belts this way. Yeah, I'll just go with completely the usual layout. This is what I know and like, so why change it? Do I need more than two gears assemblers? Yeah, we'll see. Also need plates? No. Okay, it's good. All right, it's this one that usually gets troublesome right, because I need to keep this one over there. I can do that. But that's, that's the only place where I need that, I think. Do they work like request chests? So you tell them what you want in them? Yeah, so you tell them what you want in them. And uh, the logistics bots will bring those things to the buffer chest. But if another... If a requester chest wants things that are not available in passive providers or in storage, then they will get it from buffer chests. So basically the priority of moving items to things goes, it's like highest priority is requester chests, uh, second highest is buffer, um, next, after that is storage chests, and then, and then uh, provider chests are kind of Similar priority. Something like that. So yes, they work in a way like requester chests, but they're like request they're like weak requester chests, I guess you could say. So they will not hold on to their things if a requester chest needs them. But if those things are available in something else than a buffer chest, then the boss will take it from there instead. reach. Uh, I can do that instead. That works okay. Okay, so let's get some recipes on that. Maybe I should have productivity here. I don't know. Some belt and which one do I want on which side? I guess it's kind of symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter.
And I think I'm going to keep this kind of close to here. So that I can easily uh, get the lubricant in there. So where do I have plates? I, I guess I'm also actually going to need pretty much a dedicated arm belt for this one. Uh, not quite though. Yeah, this probably isn't going to consume all that much. So I can probably put it just like here. That should do. And... Take the iron off there. I also need circuits over here. Oh, and I happen to have those here. Perfect. So, I'm gonna need to squiggle these around a bit to get over this belt. set of filters and all of these. So let's do splitter. It's a bit tedious to do remotely. Oh, well, that's okay. need a wire here if splitter less than 200 and same thing there if red splitter red less than 200 
So something was eaten. Oh, there was a wall, okay. Alright, so let's see here, then the next one. I'm just gonna need the same thing. So, for as long as Red Belt is less than, say, 2000. This needs yellow less than, say, 1,000. And yellow less than 1,000. And then blue less than 5,000. And here if red less than, say, 2,000. And then we need finally red undergrounds less than 200, maybe. And yellow undergrounds less than 200. And yellow undergrounds less than 200. Then blue less than five hundred, red less than yeah, two hundred is okay. And I also only need this and those two. There. That should be oh. That should get this running. Yeah, and I also need to make stack inserters. I suppose I could do that here, if I move these around a bit. These should also be limited. This one just needs <laughs> enormous amounts of uh, gears. But yeah, there we go. So now should I have productivity in the productivity in these? Yeah, I guess I should. a little bit to save a bit of iron. Mm, 
already have quite a few of those. So, what if I just do like this? It's gonna want to upgrade everything. Right now I only really want to upgrade the belts. And the furnaces. Guess this does consume quite a bit of iron actually. Uh, but yeah, I was talking about adding a splitter there. So let's do that. to do this actually. I guess I'll make it a red belt from here somewhere. Like here, maybe. I guess it's gonna pause all of it until this finishes making all those belts. Eh. It's probably okay. So, place one and upgrade it. Oh, and I need more furnaces too. Do I have tons of those? I must have dumped those in a steel chest or an iron chest. Oh, there it is.
It looks like I have more iron output than I am actually using over there. So... I mean, I have more iron than I... than I... I have more iron that could be used, but it's not getting there because it's getting split too many times along the way. So I will instead... Split it like this. Oh no. Split it up here. And pull it up this way. And this wall is no longer needed. Should improve the iron flow there by quite a bit. Then I can also upgrade this after I start mining this one. Can recycle a few modules from here. Also from here by now. Yep, you at least. They're bringing the walls down here. Yeah, there's a full belt of iron now. Almost, at least. Yeah. Peace wise. Alright. That'll speed up. The production of those belts. <laughs> yeah. One belt can actually support less than one of these per second. That way the belt can actually keep working. 
as it needs to stand still until this whole thing finishes. That's gonna be uh, also about six or five volts, I guess. So that bell also should be okay. thing I can do is actually start making speed modules over here which I'm gonna need for the assemblers here and 
Yeah, but those those are actually going to need red circuits, I guess. Blue assemblers need five strings? No. Okay, so I could just move this whole thing up here instead. Yep. Power's still looking kind of okay. Even with all these new miners coming up. Oh, but well I guess this isn't actually coming up. Because they don't have coverage. But I think I have enough miners in the mall for this. Oh, wait. Oh. Low on oil? Oh, has this finally fallen? Guess I need to get up there and find out. It's not seeing how many roboforts I have in the network. Okay, plenty. So, let's do a flamethrower expedition, I guess. this one
Right, now I need to connect these pipes. Yeah, now it's probably time to get rid of these storage boxes down here. Just move everything else, uh, everything back up into the base instead. Okay, this is coming up. Also need a radar up here. This forest is already burned, right? <laughs> I guess I don't really need to worry about forest fires here. Yeah, there's a while still still to go there. <laughs> and the power spikes. Yeah, maybe I need a few more power plants. If only for the power spikes. Uh, so there's a full power plant. Guess I can just pop one of those down here. Wait, I don't really need to worry about these being traversable anymore. So now I can actually get rid of this inner belt here. Mm. 
just to mirror this whole thing. Should double the power. Assuming you can get this right. Well, I have quite a bit of buffer there, I guess. But yeah, assuming I can get uh, this whole thing up and running again. finished here at least. really busy now, I guess. So yeah, let's just watch this unfold for a bit, I suppose. I kind of like the patterns that the robots make when they're flying like this. Outlining paths between uh, robot ports, basically. It's pretty neat.
Hey, looks like it's done here now. Cool. And this is also nearing completion, so I can continue up this way. These not have... yeah, they don't, these don't have... no, they do! So why don't the purples line up then? Maybe they do if I do this? Yeah, okay. It's not, not getting older then. Hmm. I guess it was pointing the, right, the wrong way, I suppose. Remember I was talking about not making the borders concave? Now I've made the borders very concave here. <sighs> I don't really feel like doing the whole push thing right now. I'm just gonna live with it, I think. Are there any bots working on this? Maybe. Just one. Okay. Two. Good. Eighty-two percent, so we're getting close to the range where behemoth biters start appearing. So maybe I should, yeah, I should probably at least double up these walls to prepare for that. 
let's make it three. Why not? It's not the constructors or those. This cliffy work. Okay, I guess like that. Okay, now let's hear what's wrong. Oh, this has been destroyed. Okay. Re-establishing contact with this outpost here after... ...30 or so hours <laughs> since I was there last time. No, wait. Uh, there, yeah, 20 or so hours since I was there last time. Yeah, it's been holding up pretty well. Was not connected. Okay. And why do these not have oil? There's another one there, okay. Well, there's a breach. That's unfortunate. I think I've put some mines on the inside. Probably. Still in here. Oh, 
They're kind of confused, it seems. So please run into some mines eventually. Just do this. Get rid of them. Be done with it. I think at least oil supply should be back up. Also explains it, I guess. Okay, that should fix that. Doing. Oh, they're placing walls, okay. Of course.
1100 modules missing, yeah. Oh, am I actually running out of plastic now? Wow. Okay, I'm going to need, going to need more oil stuff then. This is now connected again. I think. Yeah. This is only producing like 60 per second. And one of those can consume 20 per second. Yes, yeah, so and it's only going to power about a third of this. So, I guess we need speed modules up here. And those. I guess I can't really insert those remotely, can I? Hmm. Do I have to get up there? I guess so. For that I'm definitely going to need to clean this out to make sure I don't get toasted by one of these flamers. Okay, mm. that should make it safe. And that even more so. I think there were six or eight up here. Yeah, so 30 modules is enough. Turrets, okay, so these are pointing outwards, okay. Should be pretty safe. Yep, 
guess I only really need to place one, and then I can get back out and place the rest remotely. Sounds like a plan. Just use, minimize the time I need to spend around the flamethrowers. Oh, I don't have coverage here either. Talking about the robots flying outside. And get back out. Because now I can place the rest by just doing this. And then later I can just use the upgrade planner to upgrade the modules. So I can close it back up and go back to safety. It's fully upgraded now. Or copper, I mean. Oh no, not quite. Is this the one missing link? Just might be.
We got these were, yeah, with five belts. So now let's see here. How to merge these belts. This will start with making a bridge over there. So the only thing I can do here is just turn these two, or the copper and the iron belts here into just a bunch of belts of uh, green circuits. Let's see, uh, this one is two to four. Yeah, so that's more copper than usual compared to the iron. So I could to pull two of these belts and one of these belts and just smelt them right there and turn it directly into green circuits. 
That's one thing I could do here. So for that I would need some furnaces. And I don't think I want to do burner furnaces anymore. I think I want to just do electric ones. So I don't have to worry about the coal or well, fuel supply. <laughs> Look at those spikes. Okay, we have a healthy amount of light oil at least. Just a few of these are working. So, should probably grab that one soon as well. Because yeah, now I'm actually out of plastic. I think all of that is probably going to have to be in the next session, because I'm getting kind of tired for now. So I think I'm going to call it here. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.